This is one of the largest squares in all of Europe. Right now, we are in the gem of Poland, which is Krakow or Krakow. And I am so excited to visit this city. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. I am exploring Krakow for the very first time. I don't know much about the city. I haven't had the chance to really deeply research its history yet, uh, though I know there's a lot of history here. I haven't been able to walk around yet through Krakow. I just arrived with my friend Evan and our other friend. We're on a road trip for two weeks throughout Europe. We started all the way in, um, in London. We made our way to Calais, went through Brussels, and Waterloo, made our way into Germany and Berlin, and then later on went to Warsaw, and now we are in Krakow. Let me know where you're watching from, and let's explore Krakow. No direction, we're gonna stick to the old town, see what we see, just wandering around. I do recommend doing this the first time you visit a city. So right here, we are at the Market Square, and we're seeing a lot of uh, buildings all around here. So welcome, welcome everyone. Nice to see you here. Hello. So Krakow, I'm gonna say Krakow. I'm gonna stick to my English pronunciation. Um, though if I were to pronounce it in the proper Polish, it would be Krakow. I'm gonna say Krakow, just so ease of understanding since most people watching are English speakers. Uh, Krakow it has a population of about 800,000 people, more than that, and a metro population of 1.4 million. It is, as far as I know, the second largest city in Poland, the first one being Warsaw, where we just came from. And it was the capital of Poland for quite a while, only until 1596. Then it went over to Warsaw, and of course, Right after that, especially after the 1700s, Poland was stuck in a flip-flop of wars, stuck in the crossfire of multiple empires yearning for more land. Krakow, luckily, even though it was devastated in World War II in many other ways, the old town, or at least portions of it, survived. However, this did not bode, World War II did not bode well for its residents. Krakow had a huge Jewish population and due to the rise of anti-Semitism and the sheer hatred that the German rulers during that time had for the Jewish population, Krakow was one of the hardest hit and one of the largest concentration camps was just outside of the city and there's, there were a few here in the city and one of the larger ghettos was also here. Uh, very, very sad history. So keep that in mind as we walk around. Um, but I'm glad that the city today is vibrant with a lot of life. And a lot of people kept telling me to visit Krakow over and over and over again uh, because it seems to be such a popular tourist destination. So let's walk around. Let's see how it is. Beautiful architecture right over here. Colleen, nice to see you here. Carmen says, is all your knowledge on history self-taught? Yes, I don't have a degree in history. Uh, I have never been an academic. Uh, I've never been a teacher. Uh, I learn history on my own. Uh, I have a degree in electrical engineering. And uh, I really never worked as an engineer either. <laughs> I worked in media uh, and uh, and tech companies before I started doing videos. Ah, beautiful cafes, nicely lit, lots of people out here eating. Wow, I'm gonna do a complete walk around the circle. And then we'll make our way back to this side later. Teresa says, have a good walk. I will, Teresa. Ooh, is this the famous restaurant? I think this might be the famous restaurant. Look how gorgeous these restaurants are.
Just Kate says, I love Krakow. I've been here a few times. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you have. Just Kate says, uh, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. Teresa says, so pretty decorated. It is indeed just stunning, stunning architecture here. Ron says, Ariel's one thesis away from being a histrologist. <laughs> Not sure histrologist is the proper term, <laughs> but Ron, I'm glad you enjoy my work. Uh, Joe says, I'm a self-taught historian. I wouldn't consider myself a historian. Historian denotes someone who really uh, studies history, writes about history. Uh, there's a lot more that takes to be a historian, but I am indeed an entertainer who talks about history. Ooh, there's like a bar hidden in here. Look at that. Bad service within these buildings, so I might not walk into too many of them because these are these are really big 1800 style buildings, 1800 1800s era buildings. So uh, they're deep, they're big, they have stone, so they're not too conducive to cell phone reception. Bougie says, are you planning to visit the salt mines? Yes, I am. <laughs> so stay tuned. If I could do a live video in the salt mines, I will. I'm not sure if there's cell phone reception down there, but if there is, by some pure happenstance, I will. A Gen Xer says, you need a zapinkanka, a delicious baguette toasted with cheese, mushrooms, chives, and ketchup. Hmm, all right, all right. I'll give it a try. I'm looking forward personally to the Polish donuts. And that's what I might do actually tomorrow morning. So yes, you will see at least one more day of Krakow. I'm not entirely sure what I can show you tomorrow, but stay tuned. Uh, but yes, you'll see at least one more day of Krakow. And then I'm off to another place. Cuckoo says, no mass illegal immigration, no trash on the streets. It's looking clean and shiny. Uh, yeah, Krakow, you know, Poland uh, has a different style of policies compared to its European Union neighbors. Um, but that said, uh, what I'm really impressed so far by Warsaw and now Krakow being here is that it, it is very clean and there's barely homelessness in the streets. So I'm very impressed by that. Alan Nabal says, uh, Schnitzel. Ooh. I have a little bit tough time pronouncing that one. But uh, yes, I had one earlier today. Uh, it is amazing. <laughs> Anyone want to see uh, photos of my food? So earlier today we stopped in a town called Kelsey. I'm going to post these photos on Instagram stories later tonight. So do follow me on Instagram.com slash Urbanist Live. Urbanist Live is my username on Instagram. That's where I post my food photos and stuff that just won't make into a live video or a short video like food tips um, photos and videos of the trip especially on the road i just post uh as janice just said i just post good crack <laughs> the irish kind uh on my instagram stories but i had this and was just delectable at this restaurant, let me see if I can pop up the name. This restaurant in Kelsey. What's your favorite flavor, pierogi? Ooh, that's a good question. I think the best pierogi I had so far is a duck pierogi. Oh my, I just had that earlier today. This blew me away. Bougie says, that is a schwaboi, not a schnitzel, as it uses a different type of meat. The meat I had was pork. It was pork fried in lard. Teresa, nice to see you here. Teresa, thank you so much for the 50 stars. Someone now earlier sent 400 stars. Thank you so much. Was it Marianne? Let's see. There's a star party. Everyone, thank you so much for sending stars right now. 
when a star party happens, I think stars are doubled or something like that. So thank you, thank you so much. Lorraine sent 400 stars. Hell yeah. Uh, Janice says, looks yummy. It really was. Gen Xer says, you crack me up. <laughs> I'm glad, Gen Xer. I'm glad I crack you up. Mm, I'm yearning for a good Polish beer. Ooh, these restaurants are gorgeous. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, Susie says, have some kielbasa. Maurice says, Ariel did not show the huge beer he had with his dinner. <laughs> that was not dinner, that was lunch. Though I'm really full from that. Uh, and I don't think I have space for dinner. But look at this, wow. Wow, absolutely stunning restaurant. So prices in Poland, from my American perspective, especially New York perspective, are very inexpensive. Of course, when I say those things, you have to take into account that it might not be inexpensive to the people living here. There are differences in wages. But from my perspective as an American, things here are inexpensive. So eating out here in the middle of the square doesn't seem that expensive. And let's uh, see if we can actually spot a price maybe. Zwick is the best beer, says Denise. Ooh, all right, all right. I dig that, I dig that. Let's see the prices. Let's check them out. ¿Cuál es el tipo de carne que se más consume aquí? Dice Manny. Manny says, what's the main meat? Eh, el tipo de carne que yo he visto aquí más es puerco. Um, chuleta. Uh, the type of meat I see most here is pork. Uh, no veo tanto pollo. Casi no hay mucho pollo. Hay más beef y, y pork. There's not that much chicken. I've seen mostly beef and pork here. So, actually... So a lot of the plates here, 65, so you, uh, so you can divide by four and that's one dollar. So a little bit more than, uh, a little bit more than like, be about twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for grilled trout. This in New York City would now cost you unfortunately about thirty-five dollars. Uh, caprese, fifty dollars, so about eleven dollars for caprese. And servings here tend to be big in general in Poland from what I've seen. A Greek salad is $11, all right? Not too bad. And re remember, we are in the middle of the square. Espresso is 19 zolti, which would be uh, very little, actually. Um, about five bucks for the middle of the square. That's very good. Oh my God, who is this? <laughs> to go hot wine. What? Hi. Still selling the hot wine? Yeah, yeah, the hot wine. One, yeah, thank you. Do you accept card? Only cash. Only cash? Oh, damn. All right, never mind. All right, thank you. Arg, I got to get cash. <laughs> I'm here for so short, I don't feel like taking out cash. Uh, but maybe I should just for this live stream. Do you plan on visiting Lithuania, says Vincent. So you have to just stay tuned where I, I plan on visiting on this road trip. Every day is a new adventure. Doreen says, I hate that. You know, most places do accept card. This has been one of the few locations that hasn't. Denise says, uh, is Poland part of NATO? Yes, it is. Denise confirms that. Hot wine. Well, I'd love to taste that. Yeah, I just don't have um, Polish Zolti on me. All right, I'm gonna try walking in here and uh, hopefully cell phone reception stands. If not, I'll step out again. <laughs> Oleg says, don't buy hot wine at street in Eastern Europe. Why is that, Oleg? Do let me know. You're coming from a nearby country, Ukraine. Uh, you know better than me. Oh, wow. This is amazing. Hey, Claire says, uh, you're still doing your travels. I followed you during lockdown. 
Claire, I'm so happy you're enjoying these travels. Ooh, I see postcards up there. I'm gonna come back here, buy postcards. Wow, beautiful shops, great souvenirs. I love the emblems here on top. Let me know, any Polish people tuning in? Let me know what are these emblems? It might be families that ruled here at some point. Houses. Okay, so we got a recommendation. Mark Cunnington says, I recommend visiting the World of Beer across the street from the Vodka Bar. So many craft Polish beers and a nice vibe too, says Mark. Ooh, all right, Mark. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I'll keep that in mind. Ooh, here we have some map. I think it's leading us the way to the palace, the castle. BC says, try somewhere else that accepts card. Yeah, I think I will. I, I think I'm gonna need one of these hats too. It's cold, it's cold in uh, Poland. Uh, to Corona, thank you so much. Emblems from different Polish cities. Ooh, thank you, thank you. Ooh, religious icons, yeah. I gotta come back for one of these, ooh. These are nice. Antonio says, will you be going to Ireland to Leap Day? I heard women can propose. <laughs> That's, that might be a good idea. Might be a good idea. Janet says, yeah, postcards, indeed, yeah. Mega urbanists, people who contribute $20 or more on patreon.com slash urbanists will be getting postcards uh, from one of these countries that I'm visiting. Can't guarantee which, but uh, we'll be getting from one of them. Marianne says, I'm loving your streams. Oh, thank you so much, Marianne. I appreciate that. Thank you. Dwayne says, I have mixed Slavic ancestry, including Polish. Uh, I would like to go to Krakow because my late maternal grandmother, grandfather was born near Krakow. Hey, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, a lot of people from US, Canada, England have Polish ancestry. And it's nice to see. I met in Ireland, I met quite a people who had Polish ancestry as well. Maurice says, Is Evan okay? Do you have a hangover? Evan is taking a break, <laughs> chilling at our lodging. So, yeah, Evan is taking a break. <laughs> I'll be, uh, you, uh, you'll definitely see him again at some point. See him a few more times during this trip. Oh, look at these adorable horses. Look at that. <laughs> Beautifully dressed horses. Susie says, keychains for me. <laughs> and, and Susie, all right. How was the drive? The drive was quick. I mean, longer than I expected, uh, but it was about a four-hour drive, and we got here. Nebul says, uh, will you be visiting Auschwitz? Um, a few people have been asking me that. No, I would not be. Um, this is something I don't want to do. I think um, if you are visiting, because I've seen many videos, and the people who make videos about Krakow or in these areas of war-torn Europe uh, from World War II, mentioned that you have to go to these locations. I understand their sentiment, but I think it's, it's, as a traveler, I think you have to abide by your own boundaries. If you don't feel like going somewhere, don't do it. Um, you, you don't, you, you don't need to tarnish anyone's opinion of going to a certain place. Uh, people have their limits. That's, fortunately, I, I just can't. I can't go there. But um, I am interested in um, where they filmed Chinra's List, that's for sure. I would go there uh, because, to me, I really admire Steven Spielberg making that movie, Chinra's List, and the, one of the major filming locations is right nearby here. So that's where I would go. Let me know, will you go and visit the concentration camps? Um, everyone's going to be different. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on it.
And also as a content creator, I, I just wouldn't cover it either. I wouldn't make a video on it. There's people who do it so much more better, uh, would, uh, or have permission, uh, and would just really do way greater service than I could. And I don't really have a personal connection at, aside from, you know, of course, growing up in New York City and being surrounded by many Jewish people and Jewish friends, you know, of course, uh, I have some second and third hand connection, but no first hand connection personally. So, yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I kind of wanted to say that because, you know, uh, some, some of these travel videos really kind of make you feel a sense of guilt for not going uh, to a site like that. And I get it. It's like uh, going to New York and someone say you have to go to the 9-11 memorial. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say that personally. I can, I can see why it would be a powerful experience for certain people. But I wouldn't say you have to go to the 9-11 memorial as a New Yorker. Uh, I think you, you should be the one to make that call. And no one should make you feel either way. I almost said, yeah, I would go, but I wouldn't take photos. Uh, Gen Xer says, if you're sensitive to atrocities, don't. 21st Century says, everyone has opinion. Uh, Adriana says, I feel the same way about the 9-11 Museum. Yeah, I've met many people who just couldn't bring themselves to go to the 9-11 Museum. Uh, the Oscar Schindler Factory is in Krakow, says BC. Yes, I may be visiting that. Um, Kay says, I don't like the idea of going to the camps. Unfortunately, it's too upsetting. Um, Jeanette says, yeah, I would be sad and I wouldn't go either. Dorian says, don't be pressured. And Krakow looks more historic than I, than I thought. And Janice says, I don't blame you, it's too sad. Yeah. And Russell says, my mother's parents came from and left Poland just before the war. Oh, yeah, Russell. Well, I'm, I hope your family was mostly safe uh, leaving Poland right before the war. Dwayne says, I'm close to 40% Polish. I have Polish ancestry on both sides of my family. Uh, Janice says, I had to leave the 9-11 Museum. Uh, those seem like a good museum. I had to leave it. Millie says, hey, I agree with many of the urbanists tuning in. Kathy says, I felt a similar way with going to the catacombs. Yeah, there's, there's just places everyone's going to be different in their travel experiences. You know, um, I would say... Travel how you would like to travel. You're gonna, there's gonna be countries that terrible tragedies indeed happen. Some in, on the magnitude of what we're country here in Poland um, definitely has happened in other parts of the world. You know, do visit the country you want to visit, you know, because Krakow is not just about that. It is a big part, and it's a big part that should not be forgotten, but it isn't just about the Holocaust. Poland has way much more to offer, and has more history to talk about that I think should be talked about. The medieval history, the history of the Renaissance, these buildings as we see here, the 1800s history. Uh, Poland has a very long history that is beautiful in many of its moments. And I think it's also important to talk about those things. It's also important to enjoy those things. To enjoy the good cuisine. To enjoy the company of the locals. Maurice says, I hope uh, Ariel remembers about the bar. The Warsaw, the secret bar. Yeah, we went to the secret bar. It was amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. I was drawn... Uh, How's Warsaw, to sum it up, says Vintes, Vicentas. I was impressed. I would go back. I would go back. I think I could do a few more videos in Warsaw, for sure. All right, so we really wandered the entire square. Now let's go into the streets. 
I some um, to Corona says go inside the church. I heard Poland is not too fond of cameras in churches, but if I can, if I can sneak in, I'll sneak in. If I'm told to go away, well, I'll go away. Let's see if it's open. Have you had any uh, food? Says Daniel, yeah, I'm, very, I'm really, really full. Actually, I had a lot of food. So the church does not appear to be open. And this little corner right here reminds me of Florence, actually. So I will may come back to the church tomorrow. At 8 p.m., you'll hear the St. Mary's trumpet call. Ooh. We're like 30 minutes away from that. So uh, let's continue walking around the city and then I'll come back for that trumpet call. Remind me, give me a heads up when we're... What time is it, actually? Is that the trumpet call? Probably not. So give me a heads up 10 minutes before eight, so that's 7.50 p.m. Polish time. Give me a heads up so I can do my best to come back to this church. Millie says, the Holocaust Museum in D.C. really marked me. Yes, I've been to that, yes. It, it really did, did leave an impression on me. And when, when I was 11 years old or something like that. Anna says, Anna says it is 8 p.m. It is. It's just 8 now. Okay, we'll stick, we'll stick in front of the church. All right, let's we'll stick in front of the church. Let's enjoy it. All right, thank you, everyone. Is that the trumpet? All right, let's see. <laughs> Marie says it's now. <laughs> Nightbot, Nightbot is, is freaking out on the time. I tried fixing it and it did not work. I hear the trumpet in the distance. Moon Goddess, it says is Frog next? Mm, moon Goddess, I can't say. I can't say, Moon Goddess. I, I've, I signed the NDA. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I did not sign a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I can't say. Um, it is a surprise. You have to just stay tuned. I hear a trumpet. It's very faint. Uh, Firestorm says, I think I make, might make Ariel a nice meat pie when he returns to England. Hey, that sounds good. Just please, uh, just please, no, no, don't pull Sweeney Todd. Right? That's all I ask. BC says, you have to turn around to the other side. Really? Where? This way. On the other side of the church or the other side of the square? needs like an amplifier. Can, can someone get this trumpet man like a gigantic set of speakers uh, so everyone could hear this uh, <laughs> this trumpet? I did hear it and I uh, hopefully it got caught on the mic but it was very faint. People are saying uh, people are well dressed. People are indeed well dressed yeah. All right, everyone, let's go have some traditional Polish food at Horrock Cafe. BC says, I think you missed it. No, I heard it. I heard it. It was very, very faint. I heard it. Marie says, it might be Evan calling you to bring back beer. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe that's what he's doing. How's the coffee in Krakow? Says Susie. I just arrived in Krakow uh, 30 minutes before uh, this live stream started. 
I arrived to our lodging, sat down, took a nice rest, and came out and started the live video. So you're walking with, through Krakow for the first time along with me right now on the video. But yep, yeah, that was the trumpet. We barely could hear it. Moon Goddess says, I love following your adventures. They're so inspiring. Courtney says, get a hard rock shirt. <laughs> it's something I do not collect, uh, though I do have fond memories of hard rock uh, growing up in Puerto Rico because we had a big one in, in old San Juan. Almo says, FYI, your trip and your title might reach more people. I wonder if it will. Do, are people, do people search the term your trip? So I haven't had the chance to try coffee in Krakow yet, but in general, coffee in my last two days in Poland have been really good. Uh, three days in Poland, actually. Uh, so I do, I do enjoy the coffee here. Uh, so I do recommend it. And I found great coffee almost everywhere. You needed to uh, go down the street to the right of the church to see the trumpet playing. Ah, oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we just missed it. All cities have a hard rock, says Lorraine. Yeah, they do. You know, many, many cities around the world have a hard rock. I don't like the food in our rocks as a Well, I'm, I'm personally joking, but um, I assume there are people out there who, want, who have that affinity for the hard rock, so no judgments. Ooh, a jazz club. Look at this. Who wants to see some Polish jazz? Ooh, tickets are 10 bucks. Wow, $10. So remember, uh, four Polish Zolti is one dollar. And we have a show at 21.30. Cool, 21.30. 11.30. Mm. No, not 11.30. 9.30. Uh-uh. Mm. Polish jazz sounds good, actually. Jay says jazz, yeah. Joe says, have you tried the pizza in Poland? I have not tried pizza in Poland. I tried briefly pizza in Germany. It was okay. <laughs> in some random German town. I don't even know the name. But speaking of pizza, all right. Looks good, but looks very, very bready. That is a very bready pizza. Gen X says, yeah, live jazz. There's many of them in Poland. Ooh, that's good news. Ooh, what do we have here? What is this? Ooh, some basil? You can buy some fresh herbs here? Oh, no, it's this can cannabis. Never mind. I was... I was so hyped to buy some basil, but no, it's just cannabis. Bougie says th that jazz club is very classy. It's in the cellar. All right, all right. That's good to know. That's good to know. Oh my God, look at these pretzels. Wow. That's amazing. Hi. I'll have uh, the red current. The red current, this one. That. Are you one? Yeah, one. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right. So I got a sweet uh, pretzel. Uh, what's the name of this place? Gor Gorasi Gorasi Pretzel. Gorasi Pretzel. And this is red currant. Okay. Looks good. All right. Mmm, smells good. So, a pretzel in the middle of the street. Let's see how that one is. Mmm. Wow. I thought it was going to be just rhubarb flavor. I love rhubarb. You can eat rhubarb all day. I love rhubarb pie in America. It's amazing, one of the better sweet pies of America. And this is stuffed with a lot of rhubarb. That's so cool. Oh, this is good. I, I, my expectations were low, actually. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna eat a gigantic piece of bread with a little bit of rhubarb flavoring, but no. Mm. Mm. Rhubarb is tangy. It's a bit bitter. It's like it's close in taste, I think, to cranberry. Not as bitter as cranberries. So usually rhubarb is slightly sweetened. And it's so good. I really love this. this this is a great, great, great pretzel. One more bite before I start walking around again. Let me know, should I try any other pol uh, Polish treats here? Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh my God. That, that, that blew me away. I just, I, I'm so shocked that this is so good. Mm. Frances dice, Polonia es el lugar muy especial. Tiene un pasado muy triste. Sí, tiene un pasado bien triste. Bien triste, bien complicado. Muchas cosas han pasado en los últimos siglos. Pero ahora, tú sabes, bien bonito a visitar Polonia. Hay muchas cosas preciosas aquí, caminando por Krakow y Warsaw. So, uh, Francis says, y Francis, gracias por viendo. Ojalá todo está bien. Uh, so, Francis says, uh, Poland is beautiful. It has a sad history, though. So, yeah, Poland has a very sad history, a very complicated history for the past um, few centuries, especially in the past century. It was something that uh, it's barely seen in the world and yet um, and yet um, it, I think despite that history which is unfortunate Poland right now I'm really impressed by it it's a beautiful city with a lot to see No names. I haven't seen the previous live streams for Warsaw. There, um, there's two live live streams. Indeed. Oh, my mistake. I read. I misread. Yeah, someone someone is clarifying. Uh, tri Triple G. Yeah, my mistake. I said rhubarb. This is currants. They they taste very similar to me. So yeah, my mistake. This is currants, not rhubarb. Wow, this is very lively. Compared to, Warsaw was quiet compared to this. Berlin was a ghost town compared to the liveliness here in Krakow. 
Doreen says, have you seen any graffiti in the outer parts of Poland, the other smaller cities, but no, nothing here. Mika says, I was not in the right part of Berlin. Uh, now I can tell. <laughs> house it's friday that's why there's a, there's a crowd around janessa says no cars no this is largely car free there's a few cars passing but it's mostly car free i like it oh nice bar look at this Uh-oh. Sorry, there was some, um, some Beatles playing. Great song, highly recommended. Beatles from Liverpool. I've done tours of Liverpool before. So right here, we... We're looking at like a little wine bar and there's live music and no one's in there. I don't know, I'm not sure why. Oh my God, Cinema 7D VR, wow. <laughs> Susie says, where's the garbage? Asking uh, for a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think most, most parts of Europe has figured out garbage collection. Uh, uh, we're, we're severely lacking in New York, severely. So, yeah, no, no garbage in the streets. It's uh, the, the, partly because these buildings have a backside to them. So garbage is collected from the back side of these buildings. If I were to speculate. City photo says, are you going to Poznan? I'm not sure what Poznan is. Do let me know. So I think few people are watching the video behind. So if people in the comments can let everyone know to press the live button. Because I think people are watching behind for some reason. And ooh, here we have one of the city walls. The walls that surrounded old Krakow. You're bringing me back memories, says Steven, uh, when I was here in 2019. Oh, man, I'm so glad. Marie says, not once have I been mugged in the live stream. No. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I've never been mugged in my life. Uh, I've been very, very lucky, uh, grateful, and also smart, just in general. Uh, I'll definitely attribute some of my experience never encountering crime in real life because you know i also have some street smarts i grew up in new york and you know how i look like you know how tall i am i'm a very tall five two so i think uh you can take that into consideration as well but yeah i never experienced a mugging All right, let's cross the city walls. We're not going to go outside the old town today, but uh, I'm going to show you just a glimpse of how it looks like from the outside. The entire old town used to be surrounded, old Krakow, used to be surrounded by a moat and these walled fortifications. The moat is now the Plan, T Plan T, I think it's called, Plan T Park. If someone can let me know how to pronounce it in Polish. New York City photo says, I'm Polish, I'm 6'6", 
L O L, you're short. Yeah, me. I mean, well, I assure you, New York City photos. I'm a very tall, tall five two. Marie says, I think Ariel. It's because Ariel's the same. T oh no. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate your high opinion of me. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. The Barbican is ahead of you, says Robert. Ooh, what is the Barbican? Frances dice: Polonia tiene una historia antes de la Segunda Guerra Mundial con la reina de Rusia y el noble de Polonia. Ah, eso sí es correcto. Hay una historia ahí bien fascinante. Mucho, muchos imperios vinieron aquí en Polonia. So Francis says, there is a long, long history here uh, before World War II uh, with the F Russian queen marrying a Polish noble. That is true. There's a lot of interesting things. I don't know that story off the top of my head, but I know there was a lot of intermarrying. Two Corona says, if you go to the right, you'll see the opera house. Jake says, wow, Krakow, my Jewish family's from here. Hey, Jake. Jake, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate that. I hope, hope you're doing well, and I uh, hope you're enjoying this Krakow wandering. Joe says, I love when Ariel speaks French. Of course, yes, yes. All right, let's take a glimpse of Krakow's new town. <laughs> Well, not that new, uh, from our perspective. Plenty, plenty, plenty park, yeah. All right. Triple G says, not sure if you like Mondongo, but I've had tripe soup made in Ridgewood, Queens, maybe worth a try in Poland. Tripe soup, yeah, Mondongo. I didn't, ha I didn't realize there's a Polish version of a, or a, Puerto Rican dish is a maybe potentially a Puerto Rican version of a Polish dish. I didn't know that there's a similar dish here in Poland of Mondongo. That's interesting. Thank you so much, Tripper G. I'll keep that in mind for sure. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, here we are outside the city limits. Wow. This is gorgeous. I am in love. This, no wonder people visit the city. And here we have the tram system. Ooh, this looks like so much fun. All right. Yeah. I'm definitely not gonna be here long, unfortunately. But now I know, I gotta come back here. This is one benefit of doing a road trip or city hopping. I like to travel slow, and I recommend traveling slow. But there are moments where it's worth hopping around or uh, going on a road trip with friends, or you could do it on your own, and experience a lot of cities at once, because then you'll know where you really want to come back to. And through this trip, uh, I'm starting to realize, oh, I might want to come back here more than this place. I might want to spend way more time here. And sometimes it's the places that surprise you that you might think you want to spend more time in. Uh, for example, I'm leaning to spending more time now in Krakow than I do in Berlin. <laughs> Though I like Berlin, but Krakow is already impressing me more. So that's what you get to learn when you do a, a trip where you're hopping around different cities. All right, I'm going to head back into the old town because otherwise this walk would, this walk would be five hours long and I won't have the energy to uh, make a 10 hour long video tomorrow. A veces las personas no quieren hablar de la historia triste, dice Francis. Francis is saying, uh, las historias de los países contienen lo bueno y lo malo. Y lo malo se aprende lo bueno. Francis, eso sí, un buen punto. Gracias por compartiendo, Francis. Lo agradezco. So Francis says, Sometimes you have to learn the bad history so we can learn the better parts of ourselves and how to move forward. 
Patricia says, I miss their ham here. They have the best ham. Best ham in Krakow? Mm -hmm. All right. I've never been too big a fan of a ham, but if you're saying it's the best ham in the world, I'll give it a try. Leah says, I should see Wowl Moral Castle. It's wonderful and beautiful. All right. I'll keep that in mind as I wander these parts. I wonder what portions of the wall is used for because there seems to be a structure in here. Is it a museum attraction? Can people walk around the wall? I am here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Safer than the state, says Anya. Yeah. Um, Fletcher says, Spanish ham, uh, is it like it? I have not had ham here in Poland, so I don't know. I haven't had too many cured meats. I don't think I've had any. Um, I think Spain so far has the best ham I've tried in general of all the countries I've visited. Claire says, is this your first time in Poland? It is, it is, yeah. Warsaw was the first major stop in Poland I've ever made, and now I'm in Krakow, so yeah. So someone says, is this safer than the U.S.? You know, it breaks my heart, but most areas of Europe feel way safer than the U.S. I, I tend to feel very calm in Europe, just across the board, uh, which is nice. Watch out with these guys. I think they might be scammers. There's a gentleman right behind me who's with the clipboard wanting to get signatures. So. Uh, if anyone ever asks you for a signature while walking around Europe, don't sign. Don't pay attention to them. Just keep on walking. And they might get mad at you. I haven't, I'm, I haven't seen that happen yet so far in Poland. I've seen that happen in Italy, for example, or France. Don't give them, you don't owe anyone anything. So if anyone stops you, asks you for something, you don't owe them anything. Uh, I'm sorry to say this very bluntly, but it can even be a simple question like directions. You don't owe anyone anything. You, you can say politely, a firm no, and just move on. And that definitely applies to some of these scams where people are asking you for uh, a signature. Joe! I will let everyone know towards the end of my trip of where I stayed. I, I haven't been able to film all the places I've been to, but uh, I'll do my best to capture most of them. So right here we have, wow, this is a gorgeous. What, what building is this? I need your help. Fellow Polish people. Hello, Polish viewers. Francis pregunta, ¿vas a ir a los castillos? Ah, no sé, yo creo que puede ser que voy a un castillo, por lo menos. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to any castles. It might be I'm going to one. Doreen says, will you be uh, streaming tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be streaming every day through March 3rd. Every day through March 3rd, you'll, you'll see a stream. He says that is a theater. Wow. It's magnificent. Jan, you got to stay tuned tomorrow. You'll see some cool stuff. I'm not announcing my itinerary. You just got to be in for the adventure. Nor do I have a schedule. So you just got to have your notifications on or enjoy the replays.
Isabel says, hey everyone, busy at work. I missed uh, 40 minutes on the live. Hope everyone's doing well. Isabel, thank you so much for tuning in. Jaro says, I'm from Poland. I, I watch your reports from New York. I didn't think you ever come to Poland. Ah, Jaro, yeah, I travel all the time. A lot, a lot of people are just used to seeing me in New York. That's partly due to the algorithm. A lot of the algorithms on Facebook and YouTube, and if you also follow me on TikTok or Instagram, uh, only see my New York content because the algorithm thinks you only want New York content. But no, I, I visit places all around the world. I, fre I frequently get the comment like, hey, where you been? I haven't seen you uh, post in a while. Oh, I'm still posting, I'm posting from all parts of the world. So be sure to always check directly my page. And I'm happy to be here in Poland. I've, I've wanted to come to Poland for a while. I've been made, uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I made that the case now, coming here. So yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous opera house. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Wow. Isabel sent 500 stars. Hey, Isabel, thank you so much for the 500 stars. Thank you so much for being a contributor. Ooh, look at these tiling. Uh, not sure what you would call this. Let me know the name, the official name for what we see here. But this is really cool. Fletcher says, Ariel, your Spanish is really, really good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Spanish is my first language, though I'm primarily an English speaker because that's what I grew up with and that's why I mostly do all my stuff in. Susie says, Are you trying Bigos, the national dish of Poland? No, no, don't know what Beagles is yet. Oh, here we have clocks. Look at this, clocks. Just like my Bulova watch, the watch that won the war. Oh, so here we have Krakow. Here we have Edinburgh. Oh, how lovely Edinburgh is. Just walking through Krakow is making me feel like I'm in Edinburgh again. Here we have Rochester, New York. <laughs> That's random. All right, why, why, why do we have Rochester here? I guess because it's a second city, maybe? Second biggest city of New York? I don't know. Is Rochester the second biggest city in New York? It probably isn't. We have Cusco, Peru. San Francisco, California. We got Tindley, Tbilisi in Georgia, ominously blinking in Morse code. Georgia saying, help us, help. That's creepy. And here we have Lowa. What's Lowa? Oh, Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. Oh, Ukraine. Francis, no tengo un horario ni sé exactamente en dónde voy a hacer el video. Uh, so no puedo avisar antes de tiempo. Uh, Francis is saying, uh, can you give us a time and uh, where you can see us again? No, I don't have a time. And I'm going live. Do you ever get new ideas to take back from these countries, says Claire. New ideas in what respect, Claire? You mean uh, of what to learn? or cultural insights. I mean, I get a lot of stuff. So I, I, coming to these cities, I get a sense of, oh, where I should come back to. Um, there's other places I really want to come back to that when I visit. And I do, it happens. You know, I've been back to Edinburgh. I've been back to Belgium already in this trip, which was very nice to go a second time. I've been back to France many times, been back to Italy. And then uh, the other thing is cultural insights. I get to learn uh, how another culture acts, uh, their personality, and it's very nice because I get a sense of uh, how someone, how a group of people can live life slightly differently. And I love that because it illuminates, I think, one's own personal quirks. You know, sometimes just growing up as a human being, <laughs> Everyone has a quirk, 
Uh, some of us are more self-conscious of it than others, but we all have our quirks. We all have something that makes us a bit more unique compared to other people that we grow up with, other people in our family, other friends. And uh, the more you travel, the more you realize your quirk might be a quirk in your country, but it isn't a quirk in this other country, in this other culture. And I find that fascinating. Here we have like an antique uh, bookstore. Foko Smok says, Krakow is too beautiful. Krakow is indeed gorgeous. It is gorgeous, yeah. I agree. Now we're really in an off street, but maybe we'll see something down there. Also, remember when you're traveling in these European cities uh, that are walled, old medieval cities, usually you w you'll know when you're leaving the old town. It's very obvious. It might be an actual wall. It might be the change in architecture uh, but you, or, or huge wide boulevards. And usually it's a combination of all three and you know that you're outside of the old town limits. Uh, so I would say don't stress too much when you're just wandering around. Look, a tea, a tea shop. Francis dice, se ve poca gente, ¿qué hora es? Son las ocho y media por ahí. Uh, yo creo que se ve poca gente porque estamos en un área afuera del área principal. Uh, estamos en una calle más tranquila. So, it's quiet right now, not because of the time, just because we're in one of the off streets. Dindin says, I would love to see it in the daytime. Me too. Me too. I mean, this is one of the prettier cities I've seen in the nighttime. For sure, it's stunning. And it's so well lit too. Focus Smoke says, hi, hey. Is there any specific cultural insights you have adopted? I have adopted quite a few. I'm trying to find, maybe I'll go this way and then turn back if needed. So I've adopted quite a few. I actually just said it right now. Uh, one thing that stunned me about the UK that is England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, but specifically in Great Britain, so England, Wales, and Scotland, was that they are rather understated as opposed to Americans, which we tend to be overstated. So Americans tend to say things are awesome. This was amazing. I love this. This was great, man. I had a blast. We overstate things. If you compare it to... British culture, they tend to understate things. It was rather nice. It was quaint. It's quite good. It was all right. 
and they understate the, uh, these things. And this, this applies also to Dutch, to Germans, Danes. Uh, and I really appreciate that, actually. It's nothing bad, I see, I think, in an American context, but I think by seeing that other side, you kind of realize um, what really is genuinely impressive. And by seeing that juxtaposition between those two cultures, I really have obtained a sense of what truly is amazing, what it truly is awesome, what truly, who, who hanging out with is truly a blast. And I think if you experience those extremes, it'll do you good service, culturally. So here we're coming across another square. Let's see how this is. Oh, we're back at the Market Square. Look at that. Let's go on this side. Hey, who wants to go in the Irish pub? They're wearing kilts at this Irish pub. <laughs> oh my God, huge Irish pub here. You you can't go to a city without Irish pub. There's every there's an Irish pub in every city around the world. Doreen says, do they drive on the left? Yeah, they drive on the left. Yeah, same side as the U.S. All around uh, mainland Europe. Uh, it's the U.K. that's different. I think Ireland, too. So another thing that has impressed me a lot is the gesticulation of Italy and other similar countries like Greece. And I really appreciate that because by going to those countries, I realized the importance of gesticulation, meaning talking with your hands or gestures that you do in general. And I think uh, in certain cultures, like American culture or like British culture, definitely you don't have too much gesticulation and hence uh, conversation isn't always as bodily vibrant as Mediterranean countries. Looks like Poland has a lot of older towns. The older buildings are much older than they say, says Jesse. Maybe this part of Tartaria could be. Who knows, Jesse? Who knows? It could be part of Tartaria. It could be these buildings are centuries old. But we've been lied to the entire time. <laughs> Or we have a missing century, as they say, uh, which, you know, I would say every, every conspiracy has a, has a, has, has a, uh, some type of, some type of um, layer of truth to it. So uh, the conspiracy that European cities and cities around the world are much older than they seem, than they actually will be told, is indeed a very elaborate conspiracy theory, but... Um, I think there's something there that might be accurate or some type of feeling that might be accurate. There's a lot of big groups of guys walking around the streets. Is there some type of football match or some type of uh, big rugby match or something like that? Uh, lots of dudes walking around in huge groups. <laughs> and people are singing in the distance. Uh, so let me know. Do you use Google Translate to communicate people who don't know uh, Spanish or English? I have not encountered the need for it in Europe. Pretty much not at all. Uh, I can either point to the menu. I can generally say some words that they might understand. Uh, so I haven't encountered that in Europe. The only place I need, needed more translation was Turkey. 
which I haven't covered. So I visited before I started Urbanist. And in Turkey, I really required a little bit more help with translation. I think they knew you were coming, says Maurice. <laughs> Veronique says, stay away from the hooligans. Yeah, you, you do have to tread carefully. Depends on the country. Now, not all soccer fans are intense, but some countries they are. Uh, so always tread carefully if you ever come into a city with a huge football match. Here's the 7-Eleven of Poland. Zabka. Zabka. You must have a Kopik Kraka. Ooh. What's a Kopik Kraka, says uh, uh, Josia. Do let me know. Go straight, then left, and you'll end up near the castle. Go straight, then left, says Vinox. Okay. Let me know. Who wants to see the castle? Who wants to be the king in the castle? Lorraine, says 500 stars. Lorraine, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hope all is well. Hope Americans are doing well. There's a lot of cell phone sh shortages for some reason in, in America right now. Hey, look at this. Oh. Mr. says, have you considered doing Scandinavian countries? So in this trip, we're sticking to mainland Europe. So we're not going to Scandinavia or Denmark. We're not going to Denmark. I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, but yes, I've, I've covered Denmark before. I've covered Sweden. I love both of them. I was deeply impressed specifically by Denmark. Uh, gorgeous country. Beautiful people. Quite literally. Uh, in, and, in and out. <laughs> the people there are beautiful. Uh, and great food. Well, some... Some good food, not everything was great, but uh, and then I just had a good times, good vibes. So he says, Let's see Krakow Castle. All right, let's go. Adrian, have you traveled South America? No, I have not. I feel like South America, I need a bigger budget. <laughs> So I haven't done South America yet, but I need to put my Spanish to use. I haven't put my Spanish to use at all. So should I use my Spanish and go to Spanish speaking countries, namely South America? Should I be doing that ASAP? Let me know. Maurice says, oh, I see where Evan is staying. He's staying at the castle. Yes, we're staying at the castle. The Airbnb at the castle. Uh, Daniel says, woohoo, let's see the castle. All right, let's see the castle. Let's go. Gosia says, we're back at the main square. Yes, we are. So these broadcasts are sponsored by Urbanist Tours. Yep, I am launching real life Urbanist Tours that you can go on for a real life urbanist experience through Greece. If you love my videos through Greece this past summer, you'll enjoy this real life adventure with Evan, Evan Panagopoulos, who runs Explorabilia. He's an expert tour guide. He's been doing it for many, many years. He's a Greek himself as well. And he's the one who showed me through many awesome parts of Greece. And we together curated a tour that would convey the adventures I do on these live videos and bring it to you to life. So you can join one of those tours. The first one is October 2024. There's going to be an, uh, two more next year. You can book whenever you want. You can book for whatever day you want. The tours are small, 10 people or less. And um, all with coaches, with a uh, minivan. Take you from place to place. Great hotels. Hotels and the cost for transportation is covered and some meals are covered. Uh, the only thing you have to get aside from the tour price is your flight there. And that's it. And flying to Athens is relatively easy. So tours.urbanist.live. All right, let's continue on with the show. 
Hey, Gosia says, uh, please ask a random Polish person to help pronounce my name, please. <laughs> All right, Gosia, I'll do my best. Maurice says, please bring Evan some food. He is starving. <laughs> Thank you so much for the five euro super chat, uh, Maurice. Maurice is uh, sponsoring me, providing some food to my friend Evan, uh, who's who's going to be the tour leader of Urbanist Tours in Greece, um, and we're exploring more of Europe to see what other urbanist experiences we can bring to you in the future. Uh, so thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate that. Is it walking tours? No, it's a multi-day trip tour. Multi-day trip. There is walking tours within the overall trip. So it's a multi-day trip. Hey, what? <gasps> is this what I think it is? A chocolate one, please. A plain chocolate one. Uh, the this one. The yeah, here you go. And then also a water as well. Yes. Thank you. And the receipt as well. Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we went to one of the main co uh, donut chains here in Krakow. I'm not sure if there are other parts of Poland. Dobra. I'm gonna really. I'm sorry about these. This guy's Polish. I don't know any Polish. Uh, I'll do my best to learn next time I come here. But Dobra Prax Pax Krania. Prax Krania. Pax Krania. All right. So I got myself a chocolate one. They had a few chocolate ones. They had one with rum. I got the plain chocolate one. And we'll see how it is. All right. Here it is, look at this. A nice chocolate donut. This is good. Huge. Look how big it is. I spent $13.50 for this donut and the water. So 12 to buy by four is three. About $3.50 around there for this. Cheaper than the US. Mmm. Wow, great, great donut. It's a yeast donut, very fluffy. I like the glazing on top. I'm a, I'm a little bit sad that the, the, in, the inside has a little bit of fruitiness, so it's not pure chocolate. I'm not a fan of mixing chocolate with fruit. I'm not a fan of mixing chocolate with fruit. I couldn't tell which one was pure chocolate. And the woman was like, which chocolate you want? So I'm not sure if they have pure chocolate, but the donut is great. I, I'm not just, I'm not a fan of the, 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 the stuffing though, because it has fruit, a fruit jelly type of deal. Mm. Great donut, solid donut. I'm gonna have one more bite of this. This is amazing. Mmm. Wow. That's great. Great job, Poland. Oh my god. New York, take notes. New York donuts. 
don't know what happened. It's been going downhill in New York. They gotta really start making better donuts in New York again. This is a great donut. Mm. Rum, I think, would have been better. Chocolate rum, maybe, would have been better. Kay says, I love a jam donut. They did have a jam donut, so I should have grabbed the jam donut. Next time. Find a warm one in the morning. I think I will. I think I will get a warm one with jam, specifically, because I love jam. Ooh, with some specialty coffee, look. There's specialty coffee right here in the place called Specialty Coffee. Oh, cool little coffee place. Seems like it was open even until the late night. Gen X says, I love it with strawberry or, or, or currants. Yes. Today, the current pretzel takes the prize so far. Is this a walking rose, says Mikhail? Yes, uh, mostly. It seems to be that a few vehicles are indeed allowed, but this is mostly pedestrian. I don't see really much uh, car traffic over here. Daniel says, I hope you just find one pure chocolate. Yep, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. It's calling my name. I'm glad I had a Polish donut. Rafa, uh, Fletcher says, have you eaten pierogi? I've eaten countless pierogi. Countless. Too much pierogi. <laughs> I've eaten pierogi every, every meal, basically, except breakfast. I wish I could find breakfast pierogi. Ooh, Go, uh, Gosia says, traditional Polish would be with rose jam. No, I'm not a fan of rose in my food. Uh, I can smoke rose in the, in the hookah, but I don't like it in my food. Uh, but that's cool to know that it's, that's the traditional one. All right. So people are asking me about pierogies. All right, let me, let me show you some pierogies. Hopefully I'll, I'll pop into more, but watch my live stream yesterday at the end. I ate pierogies. Pierogi, I mean. I know some Polish people get frustrated that English speakers add an S to the end. You have to understand in our language, every plural ends with S. So we, we really, it's just not automatic in our heads that I's already means plural. So we just almost instinctively add an S to any word that ends with an I. So these are the two, pierog uh, two pierogi that I had, two types. The one on the left is uh, cheese and potato with amazing topping, the chives, micro greens, some tomatoes, a little bit of that kind of cottage cheese. Oh, that was amazing. And then right next to on the right was stuffed with duck. Oh yeah, it was stuffed with Donald. I mean duck. Uh, it was stuffed inside with duck breast. Oof, oh, so good. And then topped with bacon bits. Ooh, ooh. Look at that. Wow. Wow. How about Polish cabbage rolls? I have not brought myself to have a Polish cabbage roll, mostly because Whenever I've been to a Polish restaurant these past two days, pierogi are also in the menu, and I just had to get pierogi. <laughs> but I'll try a cabbage one. Uh, that I do see in many menus, and it does look good. So I think I'll try it. Joe says, this is the grammar part of the video. Indeed it is. <laughs> I got so many. I got like a few angry comments yesterday. Smack Ukrainian? Oh, cool. A Ukrainian restaurant. That's nice. Whoa. 
<gasps> More donuts. Look at this. Ooh, raspberry. <gasps> oh, how I love raspberry. I don't think most people understand. I love donuts. I've been a fan of donuts ever since I was a little kid. Ever since my uncle used to buy me Dunkin' Donuts every weekend. You know, I love donuts. Uh, so here we strawberry. Oh, this looks good. Forest fruit. Oh, I would totally eat a forest fruit one. A rose. Oh my god. A mal mali donut. Ooh, with a lot of nuts on top. Wow. What? Whoa. Oh my. Cherry donut. Oh my god. Hi. A raspberry donut, please. It's eight fifty. Yes. By card, please. Is that with sugar powder or the glaze? Ah, uh, glaze. Okay. Okay. In Polish? In Polish, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you need a coffee? Uh, yes, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, second donut of the day. This has become a donut tour, impromptu. The beauty of wandering around. Hey, if you're traveling, you want a donut, get, grab yourself a donut. Of course, you know, not everyone can. There's certain limitations that it happens, but if you're able to, grab yourself a donut. All right, let's try this. Uh, I got a glazed one, she also had a powdered sugar one. I got myself one stuffed with raspberries. Firestorm says, stop making me hungry. Um, we're in Poland. This is not, this is not hungry, Firestorm. Oh, 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 it's the donuts. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, it can make anyone hungry. I don't blame you. I mean, don't blame me. I'm just doing my job here, Firestorm. It's my job to eat a donut on camera. Like, I'm not, not going to eat a donut. This one's different. This one's a bit more grainier in a good way. Hmm, tastes more like an old fashioned donut, even though it looks the same. Something about it. It's a bit more grainier. Maybe they made the dough in larger clumps or something, but it's a great donut. Great donut. It has more of a texture of an old fashioned than the other one, which was a much more softer yeast donut. And here we have some raspberry. Very little raspberry. Wish there were more. But let me take a bite into the raspberry. See how it is. Whoa. Oh my. That raspberry is delicious. Mmm. Fresh raspberry. Oh wow. Well, not like not fresh, but you can tell they used a lot of raspberries in here. It's not a lot of sugar to cover up the low amount of raspberries. Ooh, you can mm, you can taste the grittiness of the raspberries as well. Wow, that's great. Oh, mmm, mmm. Oh, wow. that's amazing. Wow, I'm gonna need a moment, ladies and gentlemen. That is a great donut. Who knew, coming all the way into the deep parts of Central Europe, that I'm able to find a quality donut. After searching far and wide to see if there's donuts as good as New York, I found one at least in, in, uh, in London. Was unable to find any in France, but now I think I found something that is as good as a hearty donut in New York. It doesn't have a hole though. Um, they should consider putting a hole, but I love these donuts. They're great. All right, no more donuts. I gotta save space for pierogies. Pierogi.
Almo. This is a great donut. I recommend it. Donut ratings. <laughs> this donut, the, the first one we had gets a nine. Nah, the first one we had gets a solid eight point. Despite the, if it, just the donut itself, excluding the, what, what was inside, it gets a 8.4. This one, it gets a 9.2. Bougie says uh, it doesn't have a uh, hole because you can add more stuffing. Yeah, yeah, because they are jam donuts. But it seems like the other donuts also don't uh, have holes as well. Claire says, have you tried any benches yet? Unfortunately, all the benches are very soaked. It was raining a lot the entire day. So, haven't seen a clean bench yet. Oh my god. So that donut cost me eight fifty, so it was about two twenty-five, two dollars and twenty-five cents. So here we have New York style pizza in Poland. Uh, does not look too appetizing, but they do have Hawaiian. That's nice. Maurice, you really remember that bikini in that random Ikaria branch. <laughs> hey, here's a milk bar. Milk bars is not to buy milk. It's a place to buy pierogi and other classic Polish dishes for very inexpensive, even for Polish standards. Uh, but this one is closed. They closed pretty, oh, what's that, 20, 8 p.m. Well, this is basically like a Polish commissary, Polish diner. And Maurice says it was so random. Uh, Maurice is referencing a random bikini I found on a bench in front of a beach in Icaria. But the thing is that bikini seemed very old. It seemed like it was there for a long time. Uh, no one seemed to be missing a bikini in the general area. And it was quite mysterious. So then, um, yeah, I raided the bench where that bikini was. Hey, Claire says, can I come with you on your next trip? Uh, <laughs> you can book a tour with Evan. Uh, Evan, if you want someone who's just like me, who loves traveling around and knows how to run a tour, Evan is, is your guy. And he's running Urbanist Tours for Greece. And maybe in the, in the future, if it all goes well, other parts of Europe. But tours.urbanist.live. Here we have Pizza Topia. Lots of pizza here. Hey, Hannah says, I've been to that milk bar. Yeah, if you want inexpensive food, milk bars seem to be your best bet. Nina says, where are the cars? This is largely car-free old town. The thing is, we are in an old town. We are surrounded by walls. Medi uh, walls from medieval times or late, or, or a little bit later than that, actually. But these are walls nonetheless from many hundreds of years ago. And let me see if I can find a map of how it would have looked like back in the day. Yes, I can. Right over here. This is where we're walking, right here. The walled city of Krakow in Poland. And luckily, a portion of this architecture did indeed survive the war. And here we have a better map, another one. Even further back when it, 
when the town was initially built. And you can see we have like two main sections, and I think we're going to get close to crossing to the next section of the old town. No worries. Uh, Vinok says, yes, medieval. Thank you so much. <laughs> he almost says, FYI, Evan will be dressing like Ariel for each tour. Yes, I, Evan will wear a strict uniform of floral shirts for every tour. Fletcher says, thank you so much. Uh, you're great. I must leave. No. <gasps> Don't leave, Fletcher. Don't go. <laughs> no, Fletcher, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you tune in again. Thank you so much for joining. And let me know if anyone, who, who's tuning in for the first time, or who hasn't commented? You. Yes. Yes, you. You over there. On your phone. Yeah, I, I see you right now. You, you, you should be commenting at the moment. So please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm indeed talking about you. Yeah, you on the phone over there, sitting. I know, I know, I know, I know you're busy. I, I know you're watching this, at, but please comment. Everyone's expecting you to comment. Everyone, peer pressure uh, that person who indeed is not commenting at the moment. But I know they want to, deep down inside in their heart. So peer pressure them at the moment. Claire says, are people still wearing masks? No. Nina says, I can't stop commenting. <laughs> Nina, I appreciate that. The church on your left is old, 10th century. Really? Wow. Susie says, I'm quiet as usual. Uh, Kay says, me, myself, and Susie never comment. <laughs> Show us your comments and get beads. Hey, Amy. Oh, Amy is commenting from Anchorage, Alaska. Jimmy, amazing. I'm watching from White Plains. <laughs> Helen says, I think I made one comment. Hey, Helen. Thank you so much for being brave and leaving a second comment. Mater. Oh my God, comment. You're welcome to think of us. Uh, Joe says, I never comment. <laughs> wow, we got so many cool people tuning in. All right, let's check out this church. Melody. Oh, Melody, change your uh, name on, on YouTube. Melody, thank you so much for watching from Burbank. Ida, nice to see you here. Luke, tuning in from Newcastle, England. Oh, I can't wait to go to Newcastle. One of my favorite actors is from Newcastle, Charlie Hunnam. Mika says, <laughs> I never comment. Claire says, I think Poland is quite impressive. Rayna says, I'm here. I wish I had a donut. Ah, oh, Rayna. <laughs> If only one day, once I have a, a few billion dollars in budget, I will invent proprietary technology for transporting food directly to you as you're watching the live stream. Just like in Star Trek, I will make a replicator. So stay tuned. It's going to be fun. Uh, I will make, I will have those billions of dollars in budget. Maybe I'll become BFFs with uh, Elon Musk and he'll fund a good portion of it. Well, stay tuned. Art is watching from Bratislava, Slovakia. Ooh, I haven't been to Bratislava. How is it? You let me know. Gozia says, I'm, I'm still waiting for real food. <laughs> well, if we pop into real food, you know, might as well at this point. I, would, I, I wouldn't be alive without comments, says uh, Ida. We love it. Ah, I'm glad, Ida. Gladys says, donuts for everyone. Nina says, is it donut time? You know, uh, I like my donuts, but <laughs> I'm already craving something else. Claire says, make sure it's a hot food. Is the castle open at this time? No, I, I doubt the castle will be open this time. It's already pretty late. We're getting close to 9 p.m., so no. I bought some Hawaiian shirts for my son for our trip to Europe because of you. Porque tú lo usas y se ve muy bien, dice Adriana. Oh, Adriana, Adriana, that. Oh, my God. I am honored that you bought 
uh, Hawaiian shirts for your son. That is amazing. Ooh, here we have a nice fine dining restaurant. Let's check out the prices of this fine dining establishment. Oh, wow. A tasting menu is $100 per person. 400 zolti, which is about $100 per person. Oh, wow. That's not too bad. Five courses. And this is a Michelin star restaurant. Oh, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Remember this name, Fiorentina, Fiorentina. Fiorentina, okay. This looks cool. I like going to Michelin star restaurants. I like going to Michelin star restaurants out of, outside of New York or London because they're a lot cheaper. <laughs> A uh, hundred euro or hundred dollars for a Michelin star restaurant with a tasty menu isn't that much. Uh, and it's more akin of like going to a concert or going to some big event uh, or going to like a tour. I think it is worth doing fine dining every once in a while. I do recommend it. I've done a few live videos of fine dining, two, two big ones. So search Michelin star urbanist on YouTube and you'll probably find those two videos. But I do recommend it. I'm kind of tempted to go with this one. I mean, <laughs> Marie says you can eat five courses after three donuts. Yeah, I'm surprised five courses is a bit low. I prefer fine dining having a little bit more like seven to 12 courses. But uh, yeah, I could, I, could handle, I could handle five courses at, at the moment. Gozia says I'm a snob. <laughs> That's what people think when uh, I recommend fine dining. Doreen says not bad. New York would be double. New York used to be double. So uh, when I went to the two Michelin star restaurant in Bryant Park, I was charged like two seventy five, so nearly triple. Um, no, New York would be nowadays way more expensive for fine dining. You'll probably spend four hundred dollars. Whoa! <gasps> what do we have here? I love making fun of your fine dining experiences, says Susie. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, Susie. Keith says, you got to visit. You won't be disappointed in Newcastle. Hey, yeah. Can't wait to go. I definitely am determined to go. It looks like a gorgeous city when I pass by it en route to Edinburgh. So, can't wait to go. Doreen says, yes, you're right about fine dining. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me know. Have you done fine dining? Have you enjoyed it when you've done it? Gozia says, this is Wavel Castle. Ooh, Wavel, Wavel Castle. All right. I like a good castle. All right, so here's my Airbnb. It's pretty humble, it's pretty small. Not too fussy. Kathy says, the tasting menu is like samples, um, not a full order of food. Indeed it is. If it's five courses, you probably will get bigger plates and you probably will get full. I passed by the restaurant. I didn't want to film too much, uh, the patrons in there, but um, they did look like big plates. Hey, Marie says, look, it's Evan waving. Yeah, Evan, Evan, we got respect. Then he's, he's sleeping right now, uh, right now. So I would visit the castle, but I don't want to disturb Evan's uh, slumber. He's been driving a lot. Uh, we're going to do some crazy drives soon as well. So um, I'm not going to enter the castle right now. We'll let Evan sleep. I'll show it to you from the outside. Robert says, are you staying in the turret? I'm staying in the penthouse turret. Yeah, I got the onion dome right up there. And that's where my bed is at. Evan is down here. There's a memorial here, 1940 to 1990. 
So we are also in the home, we're, we're also in the, um, the area that Pope John Paul II was the Archbishop for before he was Arch, uh, Pope, he was the Archbishop of Krakow. So we are in his home turf of the Archbishop. As Susie says, and the third guy's in the dungeons. <laughs> How did you know, Susie? <laughs> it must be hard to sleep with all those lights. Yeah, luckily we have blackout curtains. We have medieval blackout curtains, which are huge metal, <laughs> huge iron coverings. So is this part of the old town or are we leaving the old town now? All right, let's peek out again. Anya says, are you going to be in New York City in September? I'm not sure. I'm always out and about. I don't know where I go. I let the wind be on my back. I literally do. I don't plan that far ahead, uh, Anya. I know I tend to celebrate major holidays with family. Uh, so I don't touch to travel too much in the big ones, but otherwise I, I'm, I don't plan that far ahead and I um, just travel as I go. This road trip was, I basically said yes to the road trip and we planned it a month before. So it was late December when I really, uh, when we discussed making a road trip. I think it was a later, it was the first week of January, actually, when I said yes to a road trip with Evan and our, our third person who's joining us. Vinox says, uh, this is kind of the hipster area of Krakow. Ah, interesting. So this is outside the, the, um, the old town center, but... May I show it tomorrow, if I can. And there's the Jewish area. Would love to show that maybe on the short video, if I can. I'll, hopefully I have enough time tomorrow, but I'll do my best to show more parts of Krakow. If it's not on live, at least you'll see it on a short video. But stay tuned, I'll be doing at least one live at some point tomorrow. Vino says, I'm not, not yet, I'm not outside of that old town. Wait, you're saying Vino, this is still part of the old town right here. This cannot be part of the old town with the tram passing through. Bree says, I hope you're plenty warm. I am plenty warm. I'm wearing three layers and a wool scarf. I got a hat with me as well, so I am plenty warm. It could be a little bit warmer. I could use a sweater vest, which I have in my baggage, but then wear it tonight. Have you seen any Asian restaurants? Maurice, yes. I've seen a lot of Asian restaurants. For some reason, there is a lot of Asian food here in Krakow. That's the border with the Jewish quarter. Oh, it is. Oh, cool. Okay. All right, let's continue walking around. I'm gonna go back to the old town. Ms. Lobb says, off to work early. I so-called Belgium. Hey, Ms. Lobb, I'm so glad you knew that I was going to Belgium. <laughs> what do I win, Ms. Lobb? <laughs> Ms. Lobb, you win a, a, a Belgium beer, Belgium Travis beer, sent to your home, hand-brewed by a monk. Or a fresh, steaming hot 
pile of frites. You can only choose one. Hey, did you get water from your first donut, says Colleen? I did, yeah, I got water with it. All right, let's, uh, who wants to go one more time into the old town? Let me know. Dio says, uh, Miss Love says, woohoo, excellent price. Dio says, you gotta take Joe with you next country. Joe, I love Joe commenting, always a blast. Krakow looks so pretty, says Kim. I, yes, I agree. It's gorgeous. I am. Vino says, take a left path now. All right, let's see. Joe, thank you so much. It's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit right now in Krakow. Is anyone working today? It is Friday, Friday night. Uh, a lot of people would be off work at this point. Firestorm says, be right, B. I'm going to make myself a nice cup of tea. BRB, I'm going to make myself a nice cup of tea. Do you have a Fitbit? How many steps are you taking today, said Luke? I don't know. I haven't walked that much, only for this live stream. Because, um, and then a little bit when we stopped that one of the smaller cities in Poland. This was the German HQ during the war, says BC. Yeah. What was the guy's name? Hans Frank, I think was his name. Yeah, he and the big H installed a person to uh, manage Poland during the war. They wanted to, in essence, annex Poland and make it, and Germanify it. So the Germans were determined to change every aspect of Polish culture and replace it with German culture, German names, German language, German mythology and German symbols. Kim says, I love walking as a tourist late at night. It's like walking in a different world. Yeah, it is. No one's playing music? No street performers, it says Jimmy? No, I have not heard a street performer yet. Actually, in Warsaw, uh, same thing. I have not heard of street performers. I'm not sure why. Maybe there's not much of a culture of street performances. There seems to be a culture of jazz bars, which is interesting. Nina says, is it safe? It is safe, yeah. Susie says, there should be a little H, yeah. Well, the big H probably had a little H, let's be honest. Kay says, it's so quiet, yeah. It is. You can barely hear a whisper. Joanna says it's too late for a street performance. It's only 9 p.m. It's not too late. I'm surprised. But we are in the main square. They're not seeing any street performers. So. Have you seen the movie Oppenheimer, says Adriana. I've seen the movie Oppenheimer three times. <laughs> it's a great film. Great film. I love it. If you're a fan of American history, you'll enjoy Oppenheimer. Marie says, no music. I've been sleeping right now in the castle. Yeah, he indeed he is. GF says, it's 9.30 p.m. right now. GF, thank you so much. Even though time 
is a construct invented by humans in order to enslave them into a linear world. Thank you for letting me know the time. I appreciate that. Wow, so beautiful. I love this. Bree says it's serene. It truly is. It looks like our universities in the U.S. A lot of universities were built with similar architectural style. Great, beautiful, beautiful castle. Buji says, university is in the U.S., but 400 years older. Yeah, yeah. well, this is bigger than probably any university building in the U.S., but it's huge, gorgeous. Mia says, there's no garbage on the street? No, no. I mean, Poland is a clean, clean country. Barely anything. I haven't seen a paper. I haven't seen a bird dropping. For some reason, there's no pigeons in Krakow or Poland. I'm not sure where the pigeons are at. What is this over here? Hey, Joe says, I got to go. Take care of yourself. I will, Joe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Leah says, uh, the pigeons are definitely here during the daytime. Ah, oh, okay. Let me see. I didn't see any in Warsaw. I'm not sure why. Maybe Bob will come in to visit Krakow. Where are we right now? We are here. We're right now outside the city walls. We're here. All right. All right. Let's uh, walk on the outside of the city walls and then find our way back in. Such a beautiful city. Krakow's so underrated. Hey, let's join these two guys over here. Hey, you guys want a beer? Mika says, it looks like a residential area. No, we are right now in the, well, residential areas would be this way, but right now we are in the park, the Planty Park that surrounds the walls of the old city. Wow, so much memory, says Gosia. Thank you. You made my weekend. Oh, my pleasure. Have you been to the numerous beautiful churches? I've only been to two churches. I managed to show one yesterday. Uh, it was stunning. The two churches I showed yesterday were stunning uh, in Warsaw. So I haven't been to the churches yet here in Krakow because they're closed. Those guys were famous scientists. They used to chat on this bench. It seems like a great bench to chat about science. That's great. 
Vino. Thank you so much letting, uh, for letting us know these extra cool facts, Vino, and for leading the way. Round of hearts to Vino and Gosia and the other Polish urbanists tuning in right now. You should visit the salt mines, says Joanna. Probably do some sh short video on the salt mines, so stay tuned. If I somehow have cell phone reception in the salt mine, well, I'll go live. Do a bench test. Benches are wet, unfortunately. I don't have too many pants <laughs> on this trip. I don't have an opportunity to wash my pants. <laughs> so I might forego a bench test at the moment. Very quiet for 9 p.m. says Doreen. It is very quiet, except for that barking dog. A dog must be American, it's very loud. Doreen says New York is 24 7. Yeah, yeah, well, New York and many parts of Manhattan and parts of uh, northern Brooklyn, some parts of Queens, you'll see life generally all times. Uh, so we, we're not in the big city. 800,000 within the city limits of Krakow, 1.4 million in the metropolitan area. It's the greater region around Krakow that's a bit bigger in population. I think it extends to like 8 million or so. But yeah, the metro region is pretty small. Oh my God, I just remembered our family did a tour of the salt mines somewhere in Europe, but not sure where. The big ones are here near Krakow. Janice, Mangandang Umaga. I think that's how you say Mangandang Apo. I forgot the one that's good afternoon. You will cross Francine Sans, uh, Skanska Street, and there's a, there's a building where popes used to stay and talk to the people from the windows as to Corona. Hey, that's cool. There's 200,000 students in the city, says Vino. Yeah. Now I can see why there's so many foreign foods here in Krakow. Vino says more than 23 universities. That's quite a lot. Wow. So beautiful. I think they did a scene here for Krakow for the movie Schindler's List, says Veronique. Yes, there's a factory area nearby the city. Uh, I think it's very close, uh, definitely driving distance. And um, I'm going to do my best to make some short video of it. So stay tuned. But yes, Schindler's List was filmed here in Krakow. Mark says, I'm surprised no snow. Yeah, um, no snow. If it would have been a little bit chillier, it would have been, this would have been very snowy. I kind of want to see Krakow in snow. It looks gorgeous. Jimmy says, do they have a bus or a subway? I'm not sure about Metro. I've seen the tram. And of course they have buses. I say of course because almost every major city has a bus system. You'll be really hard pressed to not find a bus system in any major city. But I, ha I don't know about Metro. Let me, let me know, is there a Metro in Krakow? You should check out the King's Crypt, says Joanna. Ah, yeah, that is a good recommendation. I'll keep that in mind. Lorraine says, thank you to all the Polish urbanists. Huge part of the Krakow attractions are underground. Ah, that's fascinating. Joanna. So what time is it now? Let's see.
Oh, it's not too late. Jimmy says, do they have karaoke? I'm sure you'll find karaoke. I'm not sure how prevalent it is, but here's the trams. And Veno is mentioning that this is the Pope building. This is where the Pope would uh, have his talks. It's 9.40 p.m. Well, thank you so much. 9.40 p.m. right now. No metro in Krakow, but we have great trams, says Veno. Have you tried any nice food here, Karina? Yes, I have. Excellent pierogi, excellent fried pork. I've had great, great food in Poland thus far. Wow. Beautiful church here. Got the stained glass on this one. Gorgeous. Wow, amazing. I love this. I'm having a blast. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I appreciate that. Let's continue walking around for a little bit more. Let's watch out for the vehicles. Jimmy says, surprise, no coffee shops, no pastry shops. Jimmy, if you tune in earlier, as we're walking through the old town, there's a lot, yeah. It's just uh, right now we're in the park. But um, maybe you're surprised because maybe you're watching from a country, you've been to countries where there's coffee shops and pastry shops on the parks. I don't get the vibe here, Poland, so far. It's not like um, Germany that tends to have beer gardens in their parks. Or uh, what country had coffees in their parks? Greece. Greece for sure. Greece, Greece had cafes in the parks. There's other, there's countries in Europe where that's a bit more normal. Not so normal in the U.S. It's not so normal. It doesn't appear to be normal here. I can't tell for sure. Marie says all the basil. <laughs> I'm still looking for that good basil, you know. Disappointed that that herb store was not that herb store was not for basil. Uh, Mika says Sweden too. Yeah, Sweden and Finland. Yeah, now I remember. Uh, those two countries also had um, cafes and pastry shops in the in the parks. All right, we're back into the old town, so we're gonna do one more last stop. I'm going to do my best. Let me know if you want me to try to find some food. Um, let me know if you want to see some Polish food, potentially, if things are still open. I'm not entirely sure how late night Krakow should be. Uh, it would have to be somewhere that I can sit outdoors. I don't want to really go somewhere indoors at the moment. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you want to see some savory food in Krakow. And maybe a beer. Gosia says, you will find Grazniak, Grazniak, I don't know how to pronounce that, but hot spiced wine. <laughs> Poutine and burgers, oh my god, look at that. Skinny people are easier to kidnap, stay safe and eat burgers. Huh. I gotta admit those look good, wow. But I want to show you some Peru, I want to show you some pierogi no but some uh, general Polish food Do they have goulash here says Veronik yeah yeah you'll find goulash in, in Poland Evan earlier today ate goulash 100% vegan okay. let me see if I can find the photo of the goulash
There we go. That was a goulash Evan had earlier, and it was really, really good. Ah, shawarma over here. You can find a lot of international foods here in Poland. Goulash is like a beef stew with a lot of paprika, I think is one of the main herbs used in it. I'm dying for Polish donuts, says Mark. Oh, Mark, you got to stay tuned earlier. Oh my God, there's jazz. Wow. Look. This woman is playing the sax. Firestorm says, more food? Oh no, Ariel. <laughs> More food indeed, yeah. That's cool, I love that. Cool jazz bar, oh my god, I love I love the the bars here. Yeah, so cool. Susie says it's goulash Hungarian, I think it is, yes. About thirty minutes before Oh Adam, I'm not sure where you're referring to. Luke says, uh, is there a, f a fish and ship shop here <laughs> or some uh, Greg's? <laughs> Good question. I'm not sure. Greg's there won't be. Fish and ships, you probably find at the Irish pub if you're lucky. But you're in Poland. Have all the pierogi you want and all the other items, the fried pork, the, let me know, what are there dishes? All the cabbage, all the cabbage in the world you can have here in Poland. You want a cabbage? This is the spot. This is the country to visit. Cabbage upon cabbage upon cabbage. So much cabbage you won't know what to do with. All right, let's find a cool place to sit. So yes, I am indeed in the tourist area. And indeed, you're going to be charged a little bit, but Poland, as I mentioned, doesn't really charge too much, even in the touristy area. So you're not going to be ripped off as, say, in New York in the Mill Times Square or in uh, Italy in the main squares. That's the feeling I get so far. That's why I learned from Walter's World, one of my favorite shows about travel. It looks nice, yeah, it does, yeah. It does look nice, I love it. I'm, I'm in love with this city, it's gorgeous. I can't wait to explore the other parts of Krakow. What side dish you order with the goulash? The goulash did not, it came with fries. The goulash. It did? No, it came. The goulash did not come. It only came with bread. The goulash. Irina says uh, goulash is not really Polish food. Yes, I'm aware. But it is a food you'll find here. Just like burritos you'll find all around the US. It reminds me of Italy. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Florence specifically because of the huge. Um, Huge square. All right. Dude, the road trips start early. They do. Hi. You still open? Yes. Okay, yeah, grab a seat. Okay, perfect.
Hi, yes. No. Good, how are you? It's okay, yeah. please No, thank here. you so much. Okay, perfect. And I need to tell you that yeah. we accept only cash. Only, oh, damn. Yeah. Only ca oh, okay, is there an ATM nearby? Uh, in yeah. the orange building. In the orange building. Okay, yeah. I'll be back then. Okay, thank All you. Right. Alright, I'm gonna take out cash because this place is nice. I dig it. Alright, orange building. Let's see. Ah, there we go. It says fan a fancy smanchy. It is, yeah. It's been quiet. But I like it. Kim says, Dal, that's how they get you, cash only. <laughs> So no, uh, so good to see only cash still exists as smock. Yeah, let me know. Um, is there scams in Poland with restaurants? I doubt a place like this would be scamming. I don't get that vibe, but let me know just in case, uh, Polish viewers. Let me know if that's the case. Do you check the menu first as Gosia? No, I did not. Yeah, kind of left there very quickly. I'll take it out anyway. Vino says, no, not really. Okay, good. Nice big smile says, I'm glad you like Poland. Yeah, indeed I do. I want to take out cash, but there's like a guy standing right next to the ATM doing nothing. Um, <laughs> not sure why, he, why he's doing that. Be aware of the skimmers in the ATM. Yeah, let me know if that happens. Uh, I never trust anyone who's standing right next to the ATM doing nothing. This restaurant looked good, but it's very expensive, actually. $40 for a plate, which is a lot. Uh, let me see where I can go instead. I see a line over here. I don't know what people are lining up for. I see smoking seems to be common, says uh, Susie. You know, I don't see that many people smoking, but... Yeah, I don't see that many. I don't even smell that much smoking, actually. 
how people are making in line for like some the apple mold wine. All right, let me check out the other restaurants. Jose says, ah, it is a tourist area. You, you pay there. Yeah, yeah. Krakow says, uh, Venno says, I haven't used cash since 2018. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked. It's a cash only restaurant. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go somewhere else. G GF says, Yikes says, La Mania. Yeah, it is. It is. What is this place? I think uh, some of the wow, you know, um, if I were if I were with a company, I would I would spend that money. But um, on live video, I want to kind of show you a variety of different things. So I don't want to just stick to one dish <laughs> or <laughs> burn a hole in my <laughs> wallet by <laughs> showing you multiple dishes at a place that expensive. So let me see if I can find somewhere else. This is more. Oh, but there's pizzas and things like that. Oh, no, it's not Polish. Bougie says it has an XL. Um, Dubori says, I hope he can access his Swiss bank account. <laughs> I hope so too, you know, my super secret Swiss bank account. Susie says, order Uber Eats, indeed. So here is how Polish money looks like. Apparently they, they don't like accepting large bills. That's why I was reading. So I only got large bills. It was cool. Looks nice. 
Hey, Inkspire Life says, how do you pick a new restaurant when uh, you're in a new place? It's a good question. It's a good, good question. Um, Inkspire Life, you know, uh, I, I, it's a combination of price. Combination of price, how full a place is. So that place I went to first was pretty empty, so it probably won't have too much stuff. Hey, no, no worries. Okay. Yeah, I was disappointed it was uh, Mexican food. <laughs> so yes, I can check Google Maps and I can check um, TripAdvisor. I use Google Maps more, but I don't, at this moment in time, I'm wandering around it, so I don't always rely on Google Maps alone and I just pick a place. It's a combination of how full it looks, the price, uh, and how cozy it looks, you know, how nice it looks. So it's kind of a combination of all three. Sometimes I'd rather just go to a place that looks super nice and I don't care too much about uh, if it's um, a bit more expensive. Or sometimes I want to go to a place that it might look rather dingy, but the food looks incredible and it's really full. So it really depends. It's a fine balancing act. Buji says uh, they're better in um, they're better here in uh, with uh, Google Maps than than TripAdvisor. Yes, I can imagine because TripAdvisor is people traveling. Google Maps tends to be everyone, including locals, which is nice. If there are locals there, that's a good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. But sometimes, you know, it's a bit tough. Sometimes you, you know, sometimes you're gonna run at the risk of just wandering around for quite a while to find something good. I am of the type of person that I generally am okay with walking. If I'm in a big city like Krakow, I'll be okay with walking for quite a while to find the perfect place. I have no qualms about it. And many people have seen my live streams where I am indeed walking around 30 minutes, 40 minutes trying to find a good spot. And I do, I generally, generally do find a good spot. Um, but I know some people are not everyone's like that. So if you are with a friend or a significant other or a family member who's like that, uh, it's tricky. So in that case, it's better to do your research on Google Maps beforehand. Uh, so know who you're traveling with. Um, but for me, like, I don't always need Google Maps, but I do need to, I don't, I, I won't just go to the random place in the corner that even though they're just selling some pizza and some fried chicken <laughs> and it looks rather dingy, uh, just because I'm hungry, I gotta eat now, I'll just go there. No, I wouldn't do that generally if I'm in a big city. Like I'll, I'll keep walking until I find a good spot. All right, so I'll try one more time uh, right over here. Let's see. Susie says, I'm too impatient to do that. Yes, not everyone has that patience. I've noticed uh, when I hang out with someone who doesn't have that patience, I just, I just research ahead of time and already know where, where to go. Gosia says, go to your live stream. You're still live, Ariel? I thought you ended the live stream. No, or, or rely on locals, yes. But I, at least personally, I'm not the type of person who kind of seeks out to ask people what they recommend. I, I, if, if the conversation happens naturally, then I ask uh, for sure. And I haven't been disappointed. So that, that is also a good tactic is if you meet someone or you're hanging out with someone or you're at a cafe or some shop, uh, asking for a local recommendation could go a long way as well. But yeah, this, this, um, this area does not impress me too much in terms of food. Lots of Italian, lots of pizza, uh, not much Polish dishes. The few Polish restaurants are a bit expensive, I think, for what, what they're making. Um, so I think uh, in order to find good food, one has to 
go a little bit deeper into the city. Good Polish food, that is. Uh, go deeper into the city, because I'm not too optimistic at this moment, actually. Karen says, I've been watching chat. You must have strong battery. <laughs> I do. I'm running out of battery quickly, but I do have battery. There's a cost of coffee. Uh, yeah, all right. Not much here. <laughs> hey, Kim says it's the main square, so I saw I, 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 I feel that people play it safe. Yeah, 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 that is, that is the case. That is indeed the case. All right. <laughs> All right, so Ethan says, what happened to Evan? I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's sleepy, he's sleepy. So I'm a little bit disappointed. There, there doesn't seem to be really interesting Polish food in this main square. That's okay, that's, that's natural. Um, you know, sometimes you'll find great food in the main square. Sometimes you won't, uh, which is the name of the game. Let me check this place, though. Can I do one outside? Yeah, sure. Yeah? All right, wonderful. Thank you. Maybe you can take it here. Yes, like that'd be yeah, perfect, perfect, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hungry? Hungry, yeah, yeah. very hungry, yeah. We have very nice Polish things oh, here, what? Nice. and my recommendation yeah. is always um, duck um, with a cranberry sauce. Perfect. Also, a Polish thing like a pork chop and of course beef tenderloin. Beef tenderloin as well. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. To order. Uh, yeah. Could you give me yeah, 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 go yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah.
All right, so looks nice. Perfect. <laughs> I'm excited, actually. It does look cool. Good menu. Prices are a little bit better than the other places, which I like. Yes, I'll have the duck oh, and, and a half of the Zwick. Zwick. Yeah, there okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. And also a water as well. Okay, gas, no gas? No gas. No gas. All right, everyone, so welcome. So right now we are at just a nice little restaurant here in the middle of the main square. I'll show you the name at the end of uh, this uh, final part of the live stream. So enjoy, I had to take out my microphone because I was running a battery. And luckily I carry one of these. These are small, I like them, anchors. And I ordered myself a half of a roast duck, <laughs> which in the US would be extremely, extremely expensive. Uh, unfortunately, duck tends to be like $40. Usually in New York, I think the lowest you can go is really like $40 in New York for a roast duck. Uh, it could be higher in Manhattan, about $50. And in, um, in other parts like uh, UK or France, you'll still be spending quite a bit for a roast duck, about $30 or $40. But here, uh, it's about 20 something dollars, which is nice. Uh, it's not too too bad. So I got myself a roast duck. It seems like it's gonna be a lot of food. So I decided to just stick with that and uh, a nice beer. So stay tuned. Let's uh, let's wait for it. So feel free to ask me any questions about travel. Uh, I'm not going to announce where I'm going next, uh, but I will be going live through March 3rd. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. We're going to continue driving through Europe, uh, mainline Europe, continental Europe. So uh, it's going to be really fun, and uh, I'm excited. You're going to see stuff that. I don't think many people have live streamed before. You're gonna see some places that have not been live streamed. I can I can say that fairly confidently, or at least the American live streamer hasn't covered it. And then I'm going to show you places that are very big as well. They're very famous, very well known. So you're gonna see uh, the spectrum of cool places in Europe. Marie says, uh, ooh, ooh, beer. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And gotta go. Hey, yeah, no worries. And Firestorm says duck quack quack. And grandmas could beat restaurants out competition if they gather up, says the Gen Xer. Yeah, they could. And Kim says, I'm excited for your food. I'm so glad that you're tuning into this live video. Thank you so much. So I love the decoration. Cozy seat. Nice fire right here. Ooh, I'm right behind the fire right over here. I'm very warm. <laughs> Got just light here. And we're right by the main square. This is amazing. So, uh, Inspire Life says, Great adventures await us. Mika is already making speculation. Mika is saying Prague, Vienna, and then bring back Evan to Greece. <laughs> uh, Joseph says, Ariel used to go to German restaurants in New. I used to go to German restaurants in New Britain years ago and got half a duck. Yeah, it's something you'll find often also in the U.S. Uh, you'll find in many parts of Europe. Uh, Germany, you'll find duck. UK, France. Um, you won't find duck really in Italy. You know, not much in Greece and not much in Spain, as far as I know. And Kim says, I guess the Shetland Islands are next. <laughs> I can tell you for sure it won't be the Shetlands. Uh, because we're, we're getting, we're, the rest, it will be a road trip through March 3rd. So we'll be on the road and 
the Shetlands, I think, is possible to get via a car, but you have to take a ferry. Uh, we're not taking ferries. That I'll tell you. We're not taking ferries. We're sticking to continental Europe. Susie says, okay, I guess it was uh, worth walking around for the food. Justin says, I used to spend around $30 for duck. Yeah, prices have risen in the U.S. quite a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. And don't mind me, I'm making a video. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> All right, so right here, a Schwitz. I don't know how to pronounce that, but right here. Mm. Nice crisp beer. I like it. Very refreshing. Mm. Oh, that's great. I really like these beers in Central Europe. They tend to be very nice and nice and crisp and light. Uh, not too much use of hops, which is something I really don't like personally as a, someone who enjoys beers. Uh, so in America, I, I'm really hard pressed to find beers that I really love. Um, but in Central Europe and in the Mediterranean, for sure, I find great beers. Rob says, uh, sometimes there's a server charge added. Yeah, yeah that might happen. Uh, it's good, you, you should, uh, if, if you're concerned about that, always ask beforehand, uh, but um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. BC says, how much is the beer? Um, I didn't pay attention to the price. It was like, um, I think $4 or something like that. Kim says, I also hate hoppy beers. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, like in America, we have this intense love affair with hoppy beers, which is a bit of a shame. I have never been a fan of, like I was actually in my early twenties, I was a fan of hops, but I kind of got tired of it. And I ended up realizing when I first came to Europe extensively on my own, especially making these videos, I started having these beers, you know, beers like this one, um, beers in the UK, the classic ones, the classic bloggers. A classic Pilsner from Czech Republic um, and those beers were so refreshing I didn't realize beer can actually be a drink I would enjoy after a long walk especially on a hot day and feel refreshed I, I never thought beers would make me feel that way uh, because in America they're so intense with hops it's it's like it's like drinking a complex wine or drinking a um, intense cocktail you know or the whiskey it, it's just so in your face that it's not refreshing it's tasty it's interesting but it's not refreshing but when i came here i was so impressed i was like wow beers are actually very refreshing kim says so much nicer with it yeah thank you so much for tuning into the live video steven says it looks like your restaurant bar i went uh i went to uh, I stayed at the place five or six hours for the first day I was in Krakow. The food was so good. And I had the apple pie and whipped cream. Oh, interesting, cool. Yeah, I can imagine a nice hot summer day. This is perfect because you, you have the entire square right in front of you. It's nice even now, uh, cozied up in here with the beautiful square right in front of me. Ooh, excuse me. Like dark beer from Mexico, says Adriana. Mexico, I had very few beers. I don't like Mexican beer too much. They're not hoppy, but they have a s different flavor to them, which I'm not too much of a fan of a classic Mexican beer. Hey, Miss Love says, I'm trying to appeal to the filmmaker uh, in him. <laughs> The fire, use it, put, a, put your hand out. <laughs> says, uh, says Ms. Long. I'm actually fairly warm. <laughs> I, will, I will start sweating <laughs> if I get too close to that fire. I'm already starting to sweat. Uh, 
Kim says that would be amazing in August with the sunshine. Oh yeah. Hey Kim says, what a beautiful love affair you started with a European beer. I mean, yeah, I've been I've been impressed. The, the country that has impressed me so far the most with beer has been Greece. Uh, it is stunning. And then Puerto Rico now in the past like through five years or so has had amazing beer. It's up there with Greece. So um, there's some great new beer countries popping up. Marie says, now chat, you will see how his cheeks get rosy. So, uh, that's a beer test. Well, I'm right by a fire, so my cheeks might get rosy just by it being hot. But, uh, some beers make me more red than others. I don't think this one will make me red. Uh, I'm allergic to like the histamine in the beer, which American beer, German beers, and some beers in the UK use more histamine. For some reason, Greece barely has histamine. Uh, in Italy as well, in concert beer, uh, barely beers that made me red, uh, Puerto Rico as well. So the beers that have histamine give me redness. But I don't think this beer will give me redness. Almo says, FYI, Evan will be joining you for dessert. I think Evan is nice and cozied up in the castle. <laughs> Enjoying, enjoying the actual gigantic fire in the castle uh, fireplace, of course. Have you been back to Puerto Rico, says Clara? I went back this past summer. Uh, I visited for like four days, five days, and I did like two live streams from it. I enjoyed it. I can't wait to go back. Let me know if you want to see more Puerto Rico. I did an epic live stream through the main rainforest in the middle of Puerto Rico, in Junque, with my friend Dongo, who is amazing. And maybe in the future, I can work with Dongo to launch Urbanist Puerto Rico tours. Let me know if you would like, you would be interested in that. Rob says, some beers make my jaws hurt, uh, so I put a little lemon in it. Interesting. I haven't heard of that before, but that's interesting. Alright, so, ooh, look at this water bottle. It's in glass. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. I am in love with Polish water. By far, out of all the countries, this might sound absurd to many people, but you can taste the differences in water. The more you have it, the less sugar you have in your drinks, the less milk you have in your drinks in general, the more you'll develop a palate for drinks in general, like beer, wines, coffees. And I think if you pay attention, you will start getting a palate for water. It's very subtle, it's much more difficult than any other drink, but water, Poland I think has the most unique water taste that I've had of any European country so far. And it's because it's like crisp and it's, it's very crisp and it's very like lemony, citrusy. And I'm not sure why, but it has that kind of citrusiness. And it's, of course it's not flavored, but it has that lemoniness. Mm. Super crisp water, like the crispest of waters I've had. Hey, Mika says, Puerto Rico is awesome. It's on my bucket list. Oh, so glad. How do you like collabing on your stream? Says uh, Inspired. In general, uh, how do I like making live streams with guests? I love it. I love it. It's amazing. Um, not all guests are created equal. Not everyone has a knack for live video. Uh, everyone, even if you do have a knack for being on live video, not everyone's going to enjoy the same style of live video. Some people are truly flexible. Uh, so I, I had guests or co-stars 
that have been very good at wandering and just shooting the shit, as we say in America. Uh, having fun, walking around, talking about random things related to the city, um, enjoying ourselves, um, having random foods, joking around. I l those are amazing uh, when I have that chemistry with, with a, a guest. And then there's other guests that it, they're better when they're showing me around. Like they're the they're the guide. They know stuff about the city or about some aspect of the city or some aspect of travel and they're showing me around and some people are really great at that. And then you have the people who are very strict, uh, who can who are, who who are very good in live video but they, they stick to a script. Um, this happens with tour guides, where tour guides are like really laser focus on exactly talking about what they know and what they're already prepared. And uh, those guests are fun to have, but there's not much flexibility. You've seen some of those guests on my live streams before, and they tend to be tour guides. But yeah, I, li I like that variety of guests. And I think uh, each of them have um, different things to offer to a live stream. And then you have uh, some guests well, I've been on the, I've been a guest to other live streams where uh, the live streamer is very quiet. <laughs> and that's a bit difficult, uh, to be honest. Uh, when, when hanging out with someone who's a bit quiet, uh, it, it's a bit tough, I gotta admit. I have a tough time. Hey, do you like uh, uh, Reclama Water? Um, I haven't had it yet. Reclama Water. No, I haven't had it yet. I don't think so. I'll try it out if I see it at the store. Nebul says, I was a guest, but I don't know what category you're in. Nebul, you would be in the first category. Uh, you were someone great to just walk around randomly. And you did have stuff to show me, of course. And you did know your stuff about your region of France and South France. But, but yes, you were definitely fun to just walk around. Dutch Maas is kind of that perfect. He, Dutch Maas is another great example. He kind of has all three. He's really good, Dutch Maas, for a live streamer. Uh, he, he, he's able to wander around without a plan, uh, joke around. He's able to, he knows his history deeply. Um, he doesn't stick to a script, so he's a perfect combination of the two. But yeah, Nabud was a, a blast hanging out with, so I can't wait to uh, hang out with Nabud. Firestorm says, they're not as chatty as me, Ariel, says uh, Firestorm. Oh, Firestorm. <laughs> nice. Hey, Kim says, your Coney Island live stream was amazing. Yes, especially when we ended at that beer, beer place. Uh, there was like live music there. It was really cool. Uh, Nebud was awesome when you two were together in Nice and San Maxime, yeah. I think uh, Nebud we did Saint Tropez and San Maxime, which was amazing. Miss Lop says, I'm going to Puerto Rico on the midnight plane. Oh no. <laughs> Take a red eye to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is so short from most cities in the US, or at least in the East Coast, that it's not worth taking a red eye. It's better to just go during the daytime so you don't lose sleep. Uh, Dario says, Definitivamente, more Puerto Rico videos and vlogs like the last time you came. There's so much more you can show. Oh yes. It's the minerals that come from the mountain springs, says Gen Xer. Yeah, definitely. That's, the minerals is what gives the unique character of water. And Rob says, I just uh, popped open a Lachouf Blonde. Prust. <laughs> I gotta learn how to say cheers in, in Polish, but yes. Prust, as they say in uh, Germany. Yeah, Prust. Sally says, good, li good live streams, Mr. Ariel. Hey, man. Thank you. Uh, Sally, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for tuning in. And GF says, I didn't watch the video with you two and Coney Allen. I'm so glad you enjoyed that live stream. That's amazing. Oh, thank you so much. 
Um, you should visit Cuba. Cuba wouldn't have cell phone reception, cell phone service. Uh, I heard there's very poor cell phone service in Cuba. Maybe it has changed in very recent times, let me know. But it, if anyone's been to Cuba, let me know. Have you encountered 4G or 5G service in Cuba? Uh, if that's the case, then that might be interesting in live stream. I'm not sure how strict they might be with cameras. I don't know. Uh, Veno says you can say not zdrovi, not zdrovi, or zdrovko, 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 zdrovko. So excited to see the new places you're going to visit, says Debbie. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, I hope you enjoy. And Debbie says, uh, so late, Irina. Yeah, it is, it is fairly late. <laughs> it is fairly late. And Cuba would be a nice vlog for the fact situation, I think, says Kim. Yeah, yeah, maybe we could do a vlog, uh, vlog series. I'm working with uh, my wonderful collaborator, editor, Maria. Uh, and uh, we're itching to do another series out and about. Originally, this road trip was going to be a vlog series, uh, but uh, we decided against it because A, we're working hard now at finishing the Athens Urbanist, which will start premiering March 7th at 7 p.m. Actually, I'm going to make the official announcement uh, later tonight. I gotta post that, that uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook post and YouTube post as well. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, March 7th, 7 p.m. Athens Urbanist for six weeks on a weekly basis is going to premiere every Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, it's an epic series about Athens and what makes Athens a vibrant city. You'll learn more about that. And Ra says, Nazrovi, yes. <laughs> and uh, we're itching to go to a new location. We decided against making a, a epic vlog series in in um, in this road trip because A, it would have been a bit too hectic. Um, B, um, we would have been a lot on the road. We are a lot on the road, so we don't have too much time in each city. And it's a bit hard to film something a little bit more edited in each city if we don't have enough time to know the city and then uh, see. I realized it would be more fun in a live video. So that's why I went live for this road trip. But maybe I'll go to places that there is no cell phone reception that will be worth doing a vlog series in, like Cuba or China, which would be really cool. Or um, where else would be interesting? Let me know where else would be interesting. Parts of South America. Susie says in the coffee documentary. The coffee documentary is also in the works. I will be editing. Ooh, thank you so much. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. So here has arrived the gigantic duck. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Here we have half a duck. Ooh, that looks gorgeous. Some potatoes, cranberry, and what is this, cabbage? I'm so excited for this. Look at this. Wow, that's gorgeous. So Susie is asking about the coffee documentary. I worked very hard on a coffee documentary. I ended up getting about 20 hours of footage. It's a bit too much footage. And I gotta somehow make a hour to two hour documentary out of it. It's gonna take me a while uh, to edit it. Uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> It'll be a while. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe May ish will probably be more optimistic. <laughs> I uh, says go back to Ireland. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a lot of duck for one serving, says Kim. Yes, it is. And Maurice says this is uh, red cabbage. Yes, it is. All right, let's try this out. This is a lot of duck. 
usually you, you would just have the duck confit in in Paris, in France. It'll be it's great. I love duck confit, but I love to hear that we have half a duck. Cheers, or zdrowie, zdrowie, zdrowie. Mm. Mm. Wow. Great tender duck, very soft. Duck is really hard to cook. Of all the main meats that you can cook, pork, chicken, beef, um, I'm forgetting one more. Let me know the other one, lamb, and duck. Duck is the hardest one to cook. I usually avoid cooking. I tried cooking a few times. I was semi-successful, but it's really hard. To get it tender, to get it right, to get a little bit of a crispiness on the on the skin, and I appreciate when there's a well-made duck. Mm. Wow. Mm. Let's try some of this cabbage. The cranberry sauce is amazing. As an American, I love my cranberry sauce because it's great for Thanksgiving. It combines so well with the meat, like duck. In America, it would be turkey. Um, and here's some cabbage. Mmm. Mmm. The cabbage is super creamy. Mmm. Oh, wow. It's like cream spinach, but cabbage. This is really good. Mmm. Vino says this is red beets. Oh, is it red beets? Let me know. This I don't know. This is the first time I've really encountered um, something served like this. Beets or cabbage? Let me know. Vino, who's a Polish urban urbanist tuning in right now, says it's red beets. These are nice little potato dumplings. And oh my, they're so creamy. Oh, that is a perfect combination. I love it. Paul says this is comfort food. It truly is. I feel very comforted by this food right now. Wow. I am so impressed. Excellent food. Excellent. Kim says, is mouth FOMO a thing? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And Claire says, I'm happy a moment. Indeed I am. Peking duck is even better. Well, Peking duck is, is a, a bit more time intensive because they have to get uh, that crispiness of the, of the skin. That's even more difficult. And that's why Peking duck commands a higher price usually, at least in America. And well, I was waiting for Schwalbe. <laughs> it says, go see it. I'll, I'll try my best for looking for it. 
uh, Gosia. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. And Rob says, how do you say heart attack in Spanish? <laughs> This food, this food is very healthy. Uh, I, I wouldn't work, I always stress about having this food. How good, is, how good is it from one to ten? This is amazing. I, I, I love it. I would recommend this place. It's great. Um, it's great. I'm having a blast. This is great food. And that's how I describe good food equals orgasmic. Yeah. All right. One more bite. Ask me any last remaining questions. This. I already had dessert before this, so I can't have any more food, but if you have any last remaining questions, feel free to ask. Let me show you the name of the location. So this is the place, Jehanoska, 43, Jenahoska. I might be mispronouncing that, Jenavoska, the Jenavoska. Highly recommend it, it's right, it's right in the market square, right by the uh, main market area in the center. Highly recommend it, I had a blast. Someone said rate it out of 10, this food, along with the beer. It's a solid, this is a great duck, I gotta, I gotta admit. And the, I'm really impressed by these beet slash cabbage uh, cream thing that's happening here. Um, and I'm glad that there's actual dumplings here. So I was in the mood for some pierogi, but I wasn't gonna order more food. Uh, so I'm glad I ended up getting basically a pierogi <laughs> without any stuffing. Uh, so I would recommend this, uh, highly recommend it. From this food, I would give it a nice 8.8 .8 out of 10. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Mm. That was great. One more time, Jenahovska, Jenahovska 43. Jenahovska 43. I'll let you know my final price in the comments after this video is done, uh, once I get the check, you'll find out how much I spent and you'll find out how much I spent in US dollars. And uh, if there's any extra charges like service charge, you'll find out as well. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for live videos all the way through March 3rd. I'll be going all the way through Europe. Go on the tour, on the Urbanist tour hosted by Evan at tours.urbanist.live. Book yourself a tour. I'm right now exploring with Evan to see what other possibilities there are in Europe where you can have a real life urbanist experience. Um, like you, if you enjoy these videos, you can go yourself in person, uh, guided by Evan throughout uh, Greece. So go towards that urbanist.live. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day.